So our vector-borne infections and skin infections are going to be things that generally are transmitted through some vector, some insect or something like that. Now some of these are going to be more of a regional concern, like your different ar arbovirus, your hantavirus, um, bubonic plague. You know, both of those, both the bubonic plague and hantavirus are both carried by rodents and occasionally occur among people who live or have visited the U.S. Southwest. They're rare, but if you live in areas where these cases occur, you should be familiar with the signs and symptoms. So your bubonic plague is going to generally be transmitted by your rodents by fleas, and it presents with fever, chills, and enlarged lymph nodes that may become hemorrhagic and necrotic. The largest concentration of these infected animals in the world is in New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and California. The number of human cases range usually from about 1 to less than 20 per year from uh, 2000 up to about 2014, and I haven't seen data since then. But mortality is usually low with treatment, but can be very high when that disease is untreated. There seems to be more of a stigma associated with it than, you know, mortality in and of itself. Now, some other... Some other vector-borne illnesses are going to be like Lyme disease, tularemia, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, things like that. And those are all going to be tick-borne. Now, of these, the Rocky Mountain spotted fever, which is a bacterial infection, is going to be the most severe. Within about 5 to 10 days after being bitten by an infected tick, most commonly the American dog tick or the Rocky Mountain wood tick, patients are going to develop general signs of, of symptoms of infectious illness like uh, fever, nausea, vomiting, muscle aches, headache. And these symptoms usually are followed by a rash, abdominal pain, joint pain, and diarrhea. Now, your Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that's transmitted by your black-legged ticks. And a characteristic sign here is going to be that red circular bullseye looking rash, but not every tick bite has that bullseye rash. Other signs and symptoms include general signs of infectious illness, fatigue, fever, chills, headache, etc., and swollen lymph nodes. And this infection can kind of lead towards your Bell's palsy, headaches, meningitis, and even cardiac dysrhythmias. Um, and a good bit of the patients, the majority, actually develop severe arthritis in the months following infection. And a few patients even develop chronic neurological problems. Now your tularemia is a bacterial disease of animals like rabbits and rodents. So they can be transmitted to humans by deer flies and ticks or by handling of infected dead animals. So don't go messing with dead animals. Um, or through contaminated food and water. Only about 200 or so cases of tularemia occur in humans every year, but it has been uh, identified as a potential weapon of bioterrorism because it is highly infectious and has a pretty significant morbidity. This infection can be fatal if not treated. In addition to your general signs and symptoms of infectious illness, <clears throat> your patient may develop skin ulcers, sore throat, mouth sores, eye inflammation, dry cough, weakness, things like that. Now, rabies is very rare, but it is fatal in humans and is contracted through the contact with saliva of an infected animal. So it's more common in animals like bats, raccoons, skunks, coyotes, and foxes. Um, in cases of bats, aerosolized, uh, aerosolization of the urine caves where large numbers are present can actually result in transmission through the mucous membranes, which is pretty gross. So it's a virus that's going to attack the central nervous system. Um, following the onset of your general signs and symptoms of infectious illness, then you'll start to have a, a lot of neurologic signs and symptoms start, beginning with insomnia and anxiety, confusion, hallucinations, agitation, hypersalivation, and fear of water. Um, this rabies virus travels along the nerves from the site of the bite to the brain where the virus multiplies and enters the salivary glands. Time of onset for infection to signs and symptoms, um, it, it just depends. It, it varies. But immediate treatment with a combination of vaccines and immunoglobulin injections is, is highly effective at preventing the illness. In the pre-hospital setting, if it's suspected, we're going to thoroughly clean the wound because this has been shown to decrease the chances of a rabies infection. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe there's only one case ever in documented history of a person becoming infected with rabies that survived. So very, very high mortality rate. Some of your external parasites and skin infections include scabies, lice, ringworms, and a lot of these are going to present with very intense itching and skin, skin lesions from both the parasite and from the itching itself. So scabies are just a uh, mite that actually burrows under the skin and lays eggs. And you'll see, a lot of times you'll see kind of like a line 
of the of these uh, or groupings of these little red spots, and these are where the scabies have burrowed down and laid their e laid their eggs. It is transmitted through direct skin to skin contact with the affected person, and it's more common under crowded situations or conditions. Um, scabies can also be transmitted by contact with contaminated linens, clothing, and other items like that. It's treated with a, a topical lotion or cream that's available by prescription. So just don't touch these people if possible um, with your bare hands or skin and make sure that you dispose appropriately of any kind of linens that they may be on your stretcher or something like that. Right? Your lice are going to be tiny little insects or parasites that infect the body and they use their hair, the hair shafts to deposit their eggs are called nits. And um, with this, different types of lice de de prefer different types of the areas of the body. And this can include head lice and pubic lice and body lice. They are spread through close contact with infected persons or less commonly through their personal items like bed linens, combs, brushes, hats, things like that. Um, they're not an indication of poor hygiene. They can affect anybody. They typically are going to lay their eggs in clothing and in hair but feed on the skin. Right. Um, public pubic lice are going to be spread through sexual contact and can be found in other areas with coarse hair like chest, the armpits, beards, things like that. There are over-the-counter treatments to treat lice, but some infestations are resistant. Ringworm, or tinea corporis, is not a worm, but it's actually a fungus, and it results in a circular, um, itchy lesion on the skin. It's more common in your warm human environments and in patients with your immunocompromise. It's spread through direct contact with an infected person, but can be contracted through contact with contaminated soil or an infected pet. Over-the-counter antifungals can be used to treat it. Um, that's about it. Don't touch it. You're, all of these really don't touch. Uh, Impetigo is caused by strep or staph bacteria. It's more common in children than adults, and it presents as a rash with these fluid-filled vesicles that kind of crust over. It can be painful and itchy. It is contagious, uh, especially if there are breaks in the skin. So you take antibiotics to clear up the infection. Now, boils are these painful abscesses that result from infection of a hair follicle or a sebaceous gland. A cluster of these boils is called a carbuncle. The most common cause of your boils is going to be your staph. Small boils can be treated at home generally in healthy individuals with warm compresses um, to promote drainage of it, but treatment for larger boils or carbuncles may require incision and drainage as well as some antibiotics.